näher bringen in einem 40-minütigen Vortrag. Und danach haben wir noch Zeit für Q&A. Und falls, es, falls ihr mitdiskutieren wollt oder Fragen stellen wollt, ist das im IRC möglich. Und nach dem Vortrag gibt es dann die Möglichkeit, Feedback zum Vortrag zu geben. Dann übergebe ich direkt weiter an den Martin. Bitte schön. Danke äh, für, den, für die Einleitung. Äh, Wenn es okay ist, werde ich den Vortrag jetzt in Englisch halten, ähm, damit das, also weil ich es gewohnt bin, dass wir in der Firma nur noch Englisch reden, äh, da wir sehr, sehr viele Nationen bei uns äh, da haben. Uh, so, I will talk about home efforts and before I start to do that, a few things about the agenda that will take place. So first I'll talk a little bit about who am I, um, then about your personal workspace, uh, how it could look like, then something about online meetings, uh, something that we have here now, right now. Um, some suggestions I have for your home network, uh, a little bit about monitoring, um, as, a, as the moderator told you, I am a technician, so of course I'm monitoring something. Uh, then some things about access to company network, what will be good ideas or bad ideas. Um, and something you should not, uh, you should also think about is uh, social interaction. Uh, and then some conclusion and then please questions. So who am I? Uh, my name is Martin Maurer. I work for Netconomy. That's a software, our web uh, developing uh, company. I myself work with Linux since 1997, um, but I have also experience with working with Mac or Windows as it's needed for my work, my daily work. Um, I work as a web operation engineer, that means I keep servers running and build infrastructure and uh, something like that. If you want to reach me, uh, besides the, um, uh, the uh, current talk, here you can reach me under my email address or you can also reach me under Twitter, Querendos. So let's start into the setup. That's my personal workspace. Um, uh, so you can see how it looks like um, and some of the bigger things I will mention uh, after that. So first of all, Desk. You need workspace, and uh, if you have the possibility to work, um, or if you are, if you need to work from home, look that you have a desk where you can set up your system, where you can set up uh, an ex extra monitor where you, so that you are comfortable in working, that you seat, that you have enough space, uh, something like that. It may sound um, a little bit uh, self-understanding, but if you're working for more than one day in a week from home, it's very good to set it up like that. Uh, use also a comfortable chair, something where you can sit comfortable for more than one hour. Of course, you can stand up and something like that, but um, you work for more than four, five, six, seven, eight hours a day, then of course um, a good seat, a good seating possibility is always um, useful. Uh, and like in the office, use a keyboard, a mouse, uh, something that you are comfortable with, where you can type without getting um, problems with your hands and arms and your muscles. Then network connection, um, there will come a bit, little bit later to it, uh, also with the home network, but uh, make sure that you have a stable network connection. If it's not that stable, try to look it up, how, uh, to try to find a way to build a network, a stable network connection. 
Here is one suggestion, use something cable-based, not, uh, wi uh, not wireless-based. So in my opinion, a 5G network connection is, or 4 or 5G network connection is nice to have it for a short period of time. But if you want to work for a larger time, then uh, cable-based uh, network connections, ideally like something like fiber, but uh, DSL or cable is um, more is uh, more often better than uh, worse. Then uh, camera, I use an extra web camera in front of me, uh, so I am able to when I have online meetings, I'm able to see my component better and not to look from the side or some or a stupid angle. So some laptops have it um, near the keyboard. And from this perspective, um, I don't like to be seen like that. And uh, as you can see here, uh, I use an extra microphone. Um, that's because I'm used to have very, uh, or I'm doing regularly web or online meetings. And there, the understanding is a is a is a lot of easier when you have a dedicated microphone in front of you, and also you can um, filter the sound better, so that not only your voice is transmitted and not the surrounding sounds like the coffee maker in the kitchen or your kids or something else that you don't want to have heard over the network in the online meeting. So jump into the next thing, online meetings. I prefer to use the camera in front of me um, so that I can look to the, to the persons. Uh, I like to use an extra microphone. Um, and as I'm here alone, I use my speakers from my laptop. Uh, or your speaker, or if you have extra speakers, that's also okay. Uh, uh, make sure that they are in front of you so you hear it better. Or use headphones. Um, that's also a good possibility to concentrate on what the others say. Uh, in smaller groups, I prefer that everyone turns on uh, his or her cam camera so that you see the, inter the other people's because a lot of communication is not only voice, it's also mimic, gestic, and at least you see the face uh, of your of the colleagues uh, or the other participants, and you know when they are um, not that concentrated about what you say, if they want to say something, if, if, if there is a discussion, it's easier if you see something uh, than if you only hear that. So. That's uh, something to consider it. Uh, another point is um, when you're using a client like Zoom or Teams or whatever your company is using, uh, I prefer to have the microphone uh, on mute so that I can actively switch the button to unmute myself and they the others are not uh, disturbed when I join later or something like that. Also, I'd like to switch off my camera at the start. So to join with switched off camera and when I'm comfortable that I show myself and my camera uh, and my background or something like that. Uh, then I uh, start with um, switching on my camera and with that, uh, it's, I feel more comfortable and more safe. Also, I switch off my camera during online meetings when someone else is going to ask me something so that I give them their privacy. Um, for online meetings, it's also nice if you can choose your background. Uh, here I choose my real uh, life setting as background. But uh, in meetings, you can switch in or use a slide, a more professional 
slide as background so that you don't uh, have to tidy up the, your room all the time. Uh, one f thing for uh, bigger webinars or something like that, there I like to turn off my camera and keep it turned off as long as I'm only listening to it because uh, that saves bandwidth uh, and I can more re relaxed watch what um, watch and uh, listen to that what the speaker has to tell. Okay, so from the online meeting to the home network. Um, I've here provided a sketch uh, about a typical home network. You have something like a router that gives you probably Wi-Fi. Then you have uh, desktop, laptops, game console, your smart TV, a printer, tablets, phones. Uh, for example, you have also a network attached storage or something like that in your home environment. Um, and usually the easiest way or the you think that the easiest way to connect all these your devices is via Wi-Fi. Um, I have made the um, experience that it's easier to connect or it's better to connect all the devices that are possible to connect via LAN. So you have a cable to it, a cable to your router that nothing else interferes. Um, I live in Graz, I live in, inside the town, and in best days I have about 30 networks uh, around me, and so there you can think of a lot of interferences about that, with that. Uh, so to get a stable connection, use uh, a LAN cable if possible. Uh, and if you build your house or you build your or renovate your flat, make sure that you have uh, dedicated cable management for that too. Uh, if it's possible, that helps you a lot for your home office work uh, and other stuff. Uh, next thing, um, I, I know a lot of colleagues like to have static IP addresses. I like them too, but for easier management, it would be nice, uh, or I prefer now to use DHCP, that the router is the, my central hub, and all the uh, devices that are connected to it get an IP address from the router. Uh, there I can also set fixed IP addresses. Uh, I have that for my Raspberry Pi, for example, so that, um, I know that they get always the, the same IP address, but if I have to change the router, then um, I'm easy to do that and can use another IP range for that. Um, also, when you, you have a router, you have possible, the, there are two main frequency areas there, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. Use both, five gigahertz is uh, when you're um, near your router, it's a better decision. And uh, more usually, there are not that many clients in the, this frequency band. So if you have problems connecting to your router via VLAN with the 2.4 gigahertz, try out to use 5 gigahertz. That's, that helps a lot. And for security and privacy reasons, um, use a guest VLAN for all the colleagues that you that um, you get invited. I mean, um, during the pandemic, it's not that common, but think about general. Um, when you have a guest VLAN, then um, you can easily uh, switch that on and off, give them access. They have uh, the accommodation of a stable internet uh, from your home, but you, you don't provide all the um, or your infrastructure to them. Uh, and that will also help you to uh, set up a little bit more security. Your guests' devices won't have that, so you don't control them, so you don't know if there are any spyware or uh, something else is on it. Uh, then if you have uh, set up a home automation, um, think about using an own VLAN for that. 
So separate your network for all the stuff that you don't that you use for home auto, home automation and something like that. Um, another point is smart TVs. Um, they have the tendency that they are tracking a lot of things and they, so if you don't need the smart TV capabilities of your uh, television, think about them not connecting to the internet or blocking them or blocking some sites that they are, send, they are requesting. And uh, if you have the possibilities, um, you can even use an, own, an extra VLAN uh, for your office uh, network, for your home office network, so you, that you can use a little bit network separation uh, and that can be easily done with another router where we have a double nut and you're behind the second router and have an, another firewall in front of the normal firewall that you're using. Good. So, and like I said, try to connect as much as possible over your um, over cable. Um, that helps when you have uh, NAS and you have videos on something like that on it for streaming reasons, so for local streaming reasons, that's faster, backup and other things. Uh, so when you're using your NAS as as a um, backup storage, then it will get also uh, more, it will also get faster. Uh, and um, it's easier to check a cable if it's working uh, as to have to, to check the interference of Wi-Fi. So my recommendation is to use as much cable as possible. Good. Um, Monitoring and security. So that's the next point I want to talk about. Um, one important thing is update your devices. That starts at the router, your central connection point to the internet, and make sure that your router is, for one thing, updated, use the latest firmware possible, and that you have set their uh, password and another user than admin. Uh, I help a lot of my friends uh, with network connectivity and internet setup. And there I found that the router is usually using an IP address like 192.168.01 uh, or, or 0138, like the telecom uh, stuff that's and they all have uh, admin and password as their default configurations. And if there is an um, if there is someone who wants to do something bad in your network or set uh, open some ports or something like that, he when he has access to one of your devices and then gets easily to your router without uh, proper passwords, there's uh, nothing you can do about that. Uh, managed switches, the, so some, when you use uh, dedicated VLANs or go in this direction, you can use managed switch. Make sure that they're also, you, they use also the latest uh, firmware. Uh, the same it goes on for access points and all the other devices that are uh, lying around in your network. Um, if you're lazy like me, uh, I try to do to set it up to automatic updates because usually updates help help you. If not, oh, I mean I can always switch them and do ex, uh, do um, a new setup uh, or reset them and do that. Uh, also, for of course that uh, is the same uh, for smart home devices. So your um, controlling of the heating uh, or something like that, check it monthly, quarterly. If there are updates, set up, set your yourself a date that helps a lot to figure that out. The next thing I use uh, Raspberry Pi with Pi Hole and Unbound for DNS. So I use an ad blocker uh, to filter uh, my network traffic a little bit. 
Um, I will show it then later on some pictures about that. And I use Unbound as a DNS server. Um, more or less, if your internet service provider does some filtering, use a non-filtering DNS server that helps you to reach all everything without being censored or unwanted censored. I've here set the um, URL of uh, the German GUI info. Um, they are right now filtering. Uh, you can look into that if you are interested in more. Um, and usually if Germany does that, it will be in Austria sometimes else. And I also use a monitoring uh, service like CheckMK uh, to monitor my home network. That's not to control my users. That's more or less to figure out if my internet connection is stable, if my Raspberry Pi is working correctly, and uh, so on, and if I have access to all the web pages. I show you now some pictures about that. That's my Pi hole. Uh, it runs on the server PyCheck. So. Yeah, uh, that you see here, and you, here you see all the queries that I made um, during this 24 hours. And there you see also uh, where the requests come. So my internet service provider has gave me a Fritzbox to connect to it. Um, there you see the local um, DNS names are filtered by, uh, are provided by the Fritzbox. And you see also the local host on port 5335, that's the unbound service that gives me the information for all the rest. Uh, and you see also um, how many things are blocked and how many requests came from my from a, from the cache perspective. So my um, the P hole uh, also caches some requests from that. Uh, then you see here my check and case server. Um, here you see I, I check uh, a web page um, if it's available or not. That's not hosted in my home network. Uh, it's by a provider uh, hosted on, on a provider. And um, you, you can see here what's working and what's not. So also you see your, my host statistics. There are app eight uh, hosts that are up and I check them regularly if they are, that's everything working. Here again, you see something about my connection. I blocked my one IP address, um, but for the rest you see uh, a little bit, uh, a few things about um, the connection times. Um, you see if there is the network is working and uh, something like that. That helps me to find out if I have a connection problem to a server or to a service. If if my um, ser uh, my internet service provider is down at the moment, so I can check that, um, and then I can find out and uh, figure out what else is uh, not going to work. Uh, here you see this the, nearly the same thing. Um, here is some connection of the WAN interface of the Fritz box, so you can get this information and you see how well it works and uh, how much bandwidth uh, I'm using or I have used there. Another thing is you can check your services, so servers, uh, about the uh, TCP connections. Here, for example, you see my JackMK, also the, the Raspberry Pi, and I've checked, and you see the, the spike that's going up there at the TCP connection status. That is when I connected via uh, browser to see, uh, to take these pictures. Then you see, of course, there is a lot of more connection status going on to get all the information to my browser. Nearly the same you can see here with the CPU load. Uh, you see it's working sometimes more, sometimes less. It depends on how much I use it. Uh, but it's nice to see it. And then you can also see when your uh, system is overloaded, when you need to think about upgrading it, or uh, if you have not much, um, or if it's uh, idling around all the time.
Okay, so uh, that was it for the monitoring and the network part from the home network. Then if you're doing home office, of course, you have to interact with your company. And for that, um, I suggest that you use your, so that you organize your net uh, company network in a way that uh, if it's possible, use a lot of web services for the general things you are using. So for example, uh, time bookings uh, that are mandatory for uh, in Austria to, that you have something like that and if the, uh, if the company provides something like that you can do it with a web service of course there has to be uh, set a, the web access with authentication if you're not want to use VPN because that's usually a bottleneck in a network connection and you don't need it only for web pages you can use something like uh, Cloudflare or your own web authentication service. So where you allow only, uh, so where you allow the net network access with, uh, with accessing it with your um, LDAP credentials, so your company credentials. Uh, you can set up there a second um, factor authentication over um, a Google Authenticator or something like that. Uh, and um, of, or you can do also do something like you have uh, Cloudflare gives the opportunity uh, that you have when you have a paid service that you have then set up it's like that um, your web services your company web services are behind a web access uh, security rules uh, you can use that with other uh, authentication services uh, too so for example, time bookings, wiki pages, where you describe something for your, for uh, guilt, guilt um, valid for all your employer, employments, employers, uh, employees, sorry, um, ticket systems, Git server or something like that. So general stuff, uh, you can put that behind a web access and to, with uh, good valid authentication. Uh, use two-factor authentication that helps to provide that if some uh, data is linked, linked, so some um, in, uh, login credentials are li linked, that uh, someone else is not able to use that. Only that he needs that he or she needs also two-factor authentication, something in the, uh, uh, independent from your uh, knowledge to access it. Another important thing is use password managers. So for example, Bitwarden, KeePass, there are a lot of things uh, out there, uh, a few very good open source things. You can also use a paid service if you, if you like that or if, the, if your company wants to have uh, insurance for that. Um, use that, use for every service that's possible a different uh, password that helps you a lot to keep your company safe and also to keep the company and the employee starter safe and secure. Uh, if you're working with files, um, you can use automatic syncing tools that helps uh, your employees a lot to um, have their files available and also not think about where to save, where to store them. Uh, so they don't need to upload it and the interaction between uh, uh, users gets uh, a lot of easier. Uh, I have set up uh, for a friend a uh, peer-to-peer network and I use it also for myself. So uh, I have set up my NAS is syncing automatically with BitTorrent to uh, another NAS that is located at my parents' home, home. So I have, a, you can say, a backup system that's not at my home. Uh, something like that with peer-to-peer -peer syncing helps you also to provide or to reduce the network load on your um, company network. Or you can use a centralized syncing thing like Nextcloud that is uh, also working right, quite good. Uh, so you have their easy access for that the 
work uh, documents that you have saved are available for all the others. Uh, of course, you should use or you can use collaboration tools if you're working online. That means uh, like um, yeah, something like uh, Nextcloud is providing some uh, is uh, has uh, a notice uh, app where you work together on the same web page uh, so that uh, you are able to collaborate with an, uh, together. Uh, I think there is also a talk uh, about Collabora, an open source uh, collaboration tool. Uh, chat tools uh, work quite well. Uh, so MetaMost, Slack, Teams, there are a lot of tools outside. Uh, MetaMost is, as I think, uh, open source. Um, also, when you get emails, be aware of phishing and scams. So um, what, one thing that helps to have clear and simple procedures to uh, work with that, then also use, uh, have a blameless culture. So if you are doing having an error that uh, don't blame the person, so that, uh, and if you have that kind of culture in your company, then your employees will ask you and will make sure that everything is okay and uh, they won't, uh, uh, will do some um, providing information of your internal services. And another thing is um, in my company, we work a lot of with projects. And so we have limited the access to these projects, uh, elder paste. So that means only the people, people working for the projects have access to that. Uh, and uh, with that, you provide, uh, you, you reduce the accessibility uh, for and the possibility to have your data leaked. And another thing would be to have separated VPNs for these uh, projects. Good. Um, the next thing about social interaction, um, we do um, social interaction with colleagues. Don't forget about that. So the coffee time, coffee time is a nice thing to do. Uh, think about doing some other st uh, stuff like uh, not only sitting in front of your laptop, so uh, sport uh, and something like that. Uh, what uh, also helps is to have a daily routine. So meet at eight, be available at eight or nine. Uh, then you, then for example, in my team, we have at nine a coffee break. So everyone talks a little bit how it feels, uh, how it's going on. And then uh, we talk, uh, talk and can start in the day uh, relaxed. And don't forget to take time for yourself sometimes. So uh, off screen time is also a very important time to have that um, doing. Good, some parts for conclusion. Um, working from home is not impossible, but you have to be prepared for that. Uh, be aware that you need social interaction. Um, so to find ways to do that, it's uh, to do it in a safe way, it's always good. Um, one thing is home office cannot be so it has to be organized and has to be prepared. So for example, that your company uses uh, web tools for the general stuff. So they don't have to upload uh, a lot of files. Uh, and an important thing is home office is based on trust. If you don't trust your employees, you won't have a good experience with home office. Uh, it needs rules, uh, how to deal with it so that for example, Every day at a certain uh, time, everyone is online and we can talk about the day. Um, but it also gives employees more responsibility and more flexibility to deal with the, with the daily life. So in my opinion, home office is nice and uh, a relaxing thing. If you have also the possibility to have social interaction in and sometimes switch to the company. But it's worst uh, that, of course, is now not possible, but uh, yeah.
Good. So that is the end of my um, presentation. If you have any questions, please um, start with them. Uh, and else, thank you for your attention. Uh, thanks, Martin. So currently I have no questions seen in the chat. So I will just quickly mention that you can now give feedback on, on the Pretox website, which you can find in, on linuxtarget.at. And also there the slides will be available. Uh, either Martin uploads it himself or we'll do it uh, in the next few days. And then the next talks will be in session two, Timux uh, Terminal Multiplexer by Sven Gukas, or Yocto Crash Course uh, in session three. And in session one, we have got to collect them all metrics easily visualized. Uh, let me check if there are any questions in the chat now. Seems not. Then I will thank you, Martin, for your talk. It was quite interesting. Thank you. Um, then I wish you a, a nice day. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and have a nice day and uh, a lot of interesting talks. You're welcome.